I want to give Joe Button some credit because his cachet and his, if I put my stamp on you as a podcaster, it helps people just randomly give you the, like, all right, cool. Joe stamped him. I may listen to him. But just for me, somebody who just real live really be listening to a bunch of podcasts, I, it's hard for me to tolerate these niggas because I feel like they fucking born than the other side of a goddamn pillow. But I, I am going to play this Are clip of them. The with Mandy? Yeah, well, I, I, no, I love Mandy. Episode. Listen to what They smoked that episode. No, 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 no. You're missing. Because she was on it. But trying to listen to them niggas by themselves, I can't do it. I love Mandy B. So I'm going to listen to her regardless. With Anytime I see Mandy on something, I'm going to go listen to Mandy because I just love Mandy. Her opinions is nuts. And I feel like if you don't have a big personality, she's going to smoke you every time. Because just me as a podcaster, and you're from the East Coast, you were never supposed to allow Mandy to get this take off. So for people who don't know what I'm about to sit here and play, I'm about to play a clip and Mandy B sit here and ask the room of younger people than her, hey, name me five Meek Mill songs. So basically the conversation started where they was basically, she was basically saying, um, Meek should have never been in the conversation for the next big three or the big three ever. She was saying like Big Sean, Two Chains, Wiz Khalifa, uh, few, and I don't think realistically to me to be honest, I do think Future kind of gets slighted when it comes to the big three conversation because Future isn't a rapper or rappy rappy type of dude. So I do think Future doesn't get in the conversation as he should. But I think realistically, I heard this clip. Well, I'm listening to this episode, but just this clip drove me absolutely insane because not knowing five and I'm, I'm gonna play it and then we can talk about. It. Anyone who could name five Meek records. Amen, Flexin, Maybach Curtains, uh, Oodle the Noodles, um, 24-7. 24-7. You never heard that? No, that is the, listen to what I'm saying. And they just blew me because they was about to play the song. No, that's, to me, is the worst take in Planet. No, you should, those five Meek songs that she named was the weakest Meek Mill songs, period. Like you cannot sit here and say, dog, Meek Mills, and I and I listen to him. Meek has done it to himself. Let's be clear. Meek Mills have done it to himself to the point where it's like he makes himself a joke. He makes himself the butt of social media commentary. But dog, sitting here saying that you can't name five Meek Mills songs, though. I'm going screw all of that. Let's go off the rip. I'm a boss. Let's go Tupac back. Dreams and nightmares. Fucking amen. Going bad, fucking, uh, what, I can go 24-7, what's the Chris Brown joint with him and Nikki? the joint with him and Lil Durk and Lil Baby, and let's be clear, I'm old and my brain, I used to smoke both, so my brain cells don't remember words or names to a bunch of stuff, but I can sit here and tell you, sitting here not sitting and saying, if the top five Meek Mill saying, if you don't go to top three, uh, I'm a boss, Tupac back in fucking dreams and nightmares, I don't even want to talk to you about Meek Mills, period, and all the, like, you cannot, and listen to what I'm saying, I live in the DMV area, so I understand how important Meek Mills co-sign was to Shy Glizzy. That him doing the the Chirac, uh freestyle with Shy Glizzy and and Lord Dirk was huge for both of their careers. It was the alley oop that both of them needed, and it was a great alley oop for Shy Glizzy and Lord Dirk after the whole Shy Glizzy um Chief Keef beef. And they literally was in a whole shootout, so people was kind of like, "Damn, Lord Dirk don't mess with Chief Keef." So all of that had layover, but that was the that was how big Meek was. That he sit here, nobody knew that Shaq Lizzy was cool with anybody from Chicago to even get on a feature doing songs with somebody from Chicago. And even after that, then that's what I want to say. I almost want to say, did Lil Dirk get on? I want to say he got on White Girl on the remix to White Girl for um for uh, for Shaq Lizzy after the after that feature he did with Meek. So that's my point of when I'm sitting here saying how important Meek Mills is. I don't like and this was a Mandy from Florida, and I understand that man, and I even tweeted her this um on. Twitter, I was like, bro, you just know how to piss people off. You know how to say, and you, and that is a skill level. Like to be able to be a content creator, a podcast, or whatever you want, to be able to hit that button and have a take. And that's why I always say and say, have a take. I'm not mad at her take. I'm just mad at everybody else in the room who couldn't defend the take. Like you can't sit here and argue with her sitting here saying it's no. Listen to what I'm saying. And I, I don't want I even I want to even talk about this with the Big Sean. And I do think all promotion is good promotion for Big Sean at this point because that Big Sean album. I, I kind of didn't want to get to it. I felt like I got to it because it was so much social media dialogue behind the conversation. But if I'm keeping it a buck, I didn't really want to sit here and listen to that album because he just, Big Sean, don't rap about nothing. It's just so boring, dog. But I've seen a lot of people sitting here defending, like, oh, it's a good album. It's a mature album. Again, I told y'all, for me personally, if I want to hear something mature, I'll cut on a podcast. I'm not looking for mature music when it comes to rappers. You can be as just as ignorant as you possibly want. You can talk as crazy, as greasy, as spicy as you want. Cause I'm not here looking for. I ain't, I'm not looking for responsible rap music, dog. Cause that's not so what I, rap for. I, I, I was I maybe mean, because you brought that up too, and I was going to ask you a question. Do you feel like it's an artist that you probably grew grew up with, like through their career rise, like mm-hmm. listening from? All right, I remember when they. I was at this moment, like we was relating, and then to now, like how he rapping now, I'm still relating to 
his music. Cause they was, cause it was, a, it was a whole conversation about the whole, you know, how we talked about the whole lip gloss, the sexy red, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And they was talking about that. It was like, do you feel like her audience now is going to grow up and still be able to relate to the sexy reds five years from now? And they asked. Oh, oh okay, real quick, just, just, just real quick. I, I, I come. I'm, I don't want. I don't want to skip what you're saying. I do, but I just do because I do want to even because I know, like I said, I'm bad with names. Dog, Meek Mill's levels. Do y'all remember like niggas was saying that like it's levels to this shit? And he even started like that's my whole point. I'm saying saying I think just because Meek Mill's social media behavior kind of get people to forget how impactful Meek was, or even to just sit here saying like, and I think sometimes when you took why I think a lot of people still will defend. And let's be clear, I think Meek's fan, real fan base, is a lot of street people, so they not really on social media to even have that dialogue. Don't get it twisted. People were smoking Mandy on all, on all social medias, even in that comment section on their page. Like, people was dragging her to hell for that. But even I'm just sitting here saying, like, just think about when you first heard MMG and they came as a group. When it was the... I can't even remember the name of that song because the word is... I ain't saying it's a big word, but it was like P.A. I can't even remember what the name of that song was. But when they had that first album and them niggas was on their back going back and forth and it was Meek and Ross, like, come and Meek, Ross, and Wale. I don't never want to discredit Wale because I do feel like Wale don't get a lot of people or even Ross, even on that back and forth when it was it was called uh, Ambitious on, on um, Wale album. It was, was that the intro? Was that the intro to his album? I don't know if it was the intro or like the mm-hmm. second song, but I, that song, like, they was just going so back and forth. When Wale, Meek, and Ross was in that pocket, bro, them back and forth between them three niggas was top tier chef's kiss and you cannot deny that and I do feel like I said because Meek Mill's done so much corny stuff on social media he made people kind of water down his brand so he kind of did it to himself but I still like even going back to when, and another reason I was just thinking about when he used to put out flamers when it was a uh, rose red in the island blue and this is when I was first getting into Meek this was before even before he even got the deal with Ross but when he was going off on all those type of beats like come on bro you cannot sit here and do Meek like that and then and matter of fact my last Meek thing Meek probably arguably is one of the best storytellers in that whole group of niggas or whoever you want to sit here and come out. I don't, I can't see J. Cole, I'm not going to sit here and say Kendrick Lamar because I think people like, I didn't really, I know people always bring up that Duckworth song. I'm not, I didn't really listen to the album, so I cannot discredit that song. But that Meek Mills, Tony Story series was top tier elite storytelling as a rapper. You cannot discredit Meek Mills and that Tony story. Bro, that Tony story, when he, that live mixtape Meek Mills, them John, stop playing with me. Them intros, like he was setting up, y'all think, but before he even got to Dreams and Nightmares, when he had DJ Drama coming in, they just setting up the intros for every last one of those Dream Chase, uh, what was it, Dream Chasers, that was the name of the albums. No, you, uh, mixtapes, you could not find no better intros to any other, uh, uh, any mixtape at that time. Meek Mills had the best intros to mixtapes period at that point in time when live mixtapes and that piff was a thing and Meeks was dropping them dream chaser one dream chaser two dream chaser three when he was dropping them projects you could not put nobody in a category with meek mills because guess what that drake and meek mills thing wouldn't have been a real beef it wouldn't even been nothing worth drake even talking about winning if niggas didn't have meek at that level if niggas wasn't celebrating meek mills the way they were celebrating him you think drake would have even actually had a back and forth with him or would that have been such a huge W for Drake if niggas just felt like Meek was a poop hut? If niggas really felt like Meek Mills was a poop, and that's my point of what I'm sitting here saying, that should have been the conversation. You're not going to sit here in my face and be like, oh, you can't name five Meek Mills on. Drake would not have sit here and hung his hat so high on that W and felt like he literally just pulled a LeBron coming back from down 3-1 and I just won a championship if he did, if Meek Mills wasn't celebrated by everybody at a higher level. And that is why that champion, that win, that beef with Drake, and that's why niggas felt like Drake was going to smoke whoever else he got in the beef with because what he did to Meek. It would not be no conversation if niggas didn't feel that highly about Meek Mill. So again, that's what I'm saying. I don't respect the Meek Mill's disrespect. And we, we could talk about Uptown Vibes. And because I am somebody who normally skipped that last Spanish dude, I ain't gonna lie to you. That Spanish nigga, Anuela, or whatever his name is, he got a huge following. I ain't gonna lie to you. I sleep on him a lot. Liddy again with Tory Lanez. I'm just looking at some of his jokes like, man, stop playing with Meek Mill. It's like, come on, dog. y'all being disrespectful. And I ain't gonna lie to you. Him and Nikki, they had a, when they was in a relationship and he was kind of getting a bunch of Nikki features on them mixtapes, Nikki and Meek had a, a nice little run where I'm sure Nikki is such a big star. She don't ever have to go in them bags. And Meek probably still a little too butthurt, but he probably should go in them bags when he even performing at a concert because him and Nicki had some Jones. Like they had some, they had some crazy rap, bitty rap back and forth. It was him, what was it? Him, Ross, and Nicki on the Jones. I think French Montana was on that Jones. Man, they had some Jones. And I ain't even talking about their super radio songs like Stop and Jump Out My Face with Future. Like, man, stop fucking playing with me, Mills. Anyway, but going back to the question you said, do you have, is there some rappers that I felt like I've outgrown? No, that you've grown with. 
Oh, like grown with missing, like you was listening to back in the day, and you uh, like I mean Wayne. I think for, I think for most people, if you, I think for most people, it will be Wayne. For most people, if you in your thir- if you in your late thirties, early forties, I feel like Wayne. I feel like Wayne is the person that I'm, I feel like all of us are kind of like grew up with. Like he's kind of like if you in your if you're in your late thirties, early forties, I feel like Wayne should be that for everybody because he was kind he was our age, and we kind of got to get, like he, he like he, especially if you're in your forties, like prime Wayne. That was probably your prime time of going to the club. But can, I'm just, like, can you still relate to their like their music now? Like his, I don't, music, I don't think, I don't think, still... I don't think Wayne ever made to me ever made relatable music. No, because that's why I'm asking. Because like when when you when you think about like how in certain eras and like even when you say like the Meek era, like oh when Meek was doing those freestyles and it's like damn yeah I remember when I was oh yeah I was doing the exact same thing. I just you know what I'm saying like in that era where I can relate to his music even more. And then like now uh, like it evolving because like you how you a big Jeezy fan, but do you feel like him evolving? You can't relate to it now. Yeah, like, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't think, I think realistically, no, because for, for and I don't think for most rappers, I don't think people can relate because I think even for it's so like look, I, you can kind of use Jay Z for example. I think Jay Z always rapped so far ahead of his audience. It was like y'all will get here eventually. Like, I think we talked about that before in here. Like when we talked about like when Jay Z was rapping about red bottoms, niggas wasn't even didn't even know what he was talking about. Yeah, like, no, he was, and he wasn't. But I feel like he still kind of you. It was songs that you could relate to or even even vibe with. I'm just like. I, like I can use Wale for example, like even the early Wale, a Wale, what he rapped about and stuff like that, I relate, and I still kind of even more. I feel like he's kind of he's getting more into his feelings and expressing himself more that way. But like when he was rapping about the sneakers and all that, back yeah. So that's what so, so I was about to so say. I think I think so. so okay, so so, so I'm so I'm with you. So I'm with you on that. If if if, if that is the person that you want to use, I'm cool. With, I'm a cool with agreeing with Wale because I do think really one, he's in our age group, and then two, I think his music has always been relatable to people in the DMV, or even if you're not from the DMV. But if you was really into sneakers or streetwear at that time. So when Wale was coming up, we were selling clothes. So we was going to all the events that Wale was kind of almost damn near catering his music to. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. If you if you're sitting here saying like somebody that I could sit here and say my my ears have grown to or even even if I didn't at that time didn't appreciate him as much. But if I look back on in hindsight of like, damn, what was I doing? We were selling clothes. We was going to all the major streetwear um, clothing conventions and stuff like that. The sales shirts and get into sneaker boutiques while they was kind of at that time was the guy like he was the cream of the top like at that point in time like he was knocking out if we're talking about just his competition in that blog era of like the mickey fats and all them other niggas who was from new york and literally living in it for a dmv person and he was kind of like ahead of all or like the what's cool when it comes to the sneakers and how he wore and stuff because he wasn't like too backpack it was still enough where it's like oh no nah, he put that shit on like you can oh i don't think nobody and again even giving talk could stand on wale like I think we, I think as a DMV, I think people do a horrible job. And I, we talked about this a million times on here. People do a horrible job at even championing him and or try to discredit him or see him say, oh, he didn't do this right. He didn't do that wrong. But when he get it right, he get it right. Even like the phones is about to come out with the DMV thing on the back and they only going to be sold in the DMV yeah, area. They already came out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, it so what, it was a raffle, Jones. Yeah. You see, I don't because I don't buy sneakers no more, so I don't know. But it, to me, it was tight though. It was still that that is per and to be honest, Nike probably waited too long to do it. He should have probably been had a pair of phone pauses a long time ago before they went crazy with all the weatherman jumps and all them other crazy different phone pod phone posit patterns. They probably been should have gave Wale his own signature jump and let him come up with something because realistically, when you think of phone pauses, it's Penny Hardaway, then it's Wale. I don't care how niggas feel about it. We keep it if we being honest, it's Penny Hardaway and then it's Wale. I mean, for real. I mean, you just because Penny is just iconic for the blue ones, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, of course, for all the rest of them, for all the other shoes. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's why. But that's what I'm saying. But so that's why I'm with you. I agree with you with the Wale situation. Like, if you're talking about actual, because I feel like Jeezy caught me at a moment when it was like, all right, yeah, I'm outside every day and I'm hustling or whatever the case may be. And that may be for like a two album or three, four mixtape time. But then after that, it's kind of like the more I get older, I think Jeezy got too. Cause I think the, the the thing that rappers do sometimes, and I can't where they lose people, they get too rich when they like they feel like they gotta get like rich even, and and their braggadocious is kind of just like and nobody can't relate to buying a hundred properties like that's not to me is not realistic. Like a nigga can see, I can sit here and and make myself a little bit delusional. Jeezy could be talking about moving a hundred bricks, but I could have just got off ten pounds. So that to me is still relatable. Now, of course, the price, the the profit margin, and all of that ain't nowhere near the same. But I can realistically put my brain there. But if you kind of only talking about buying real estate and properties and all of these luxury buildings and all of this, like the average person can't relate to that. 
And I think even when Jeezy thought that was kind of like a flex, like, yeah, I own half of Atlanta. Like, in that time, like, niggas, like, when you think about that back and forth that he was having with Jeezy and with Gucci, niggas ain't really want to hear that. Like, it sounds like the grown man way to take, but niggas was kind of like, no, he just told you he's pick your, go dig your homeboy up. And that's where, and that's the sad thing is, that's where niggas' brains be. Because we look at like, nigga, this is not a clapback. He just told you to go dig up your homeboy, and you talking about you own properties. Them niggas wasn't trying to hear that at that time. 